I'm Dean Hemphill, the pastor of Clark's Chapel Baptist Church in Thomason, Georgia. It is a great pleasure this time to bring you a service from our church. We are very thankful that several years ago that God led us to do this. We want to help you each week, wherever you may, may be, to have a service from this church of great gospel singing, choir singing, special music, and to preach God's Word. If possible this time that I preach in the service, if you could, get your Bible out and follow along with us. You'll learn much by doing that from God's Word. But once again, we thank you so much for this next hour to spend with us from this church. We hope you'll be blessed. We give God all the praise for it. And you pray for us, and we'll pray for you. And with God's help, we'll all make it together one day at a time. Thank you so much. Y'all doing all right this morning? I know it's a little dreary outside, but we ain't got to make it that way in here. Amen. Come on, everybody like this. my 
covered hands But I called out to Christ He took my place On the cross at Calvary Many times we go to God in your name, but I want to talk to you. Your body, your glorified body is filled with scars. I want to talk to you and tell you how much we thank you that you did not back out of it. That you did drink the cup and you did die for the sins of of humanity. We thank you, Jesus, that you bore it all. You cared all our sorrows. You were wounded for our transgressions. And with your stripes, we are healed. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we ask this and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's please turn to the book of Acts, the 10th chapter, on the subject today, Cornelius' conversion. 
If you think about why in this one chapter that God put so much in about one conversion, we may sometimes think it was not necessary. Let's reflect back in the book of Acts. In the second chapter, it's recorded about 3,000 souls were saved. In the fourth chapter, it's recorded 5,000 were saved. So, so far, the church had some 8,000 members, 8,000 Christians. But now in this chapter, we have one conversion that God would spend time on. Why is it necessary for us to have this about Cornelius? He is the first recorded Gentile that was saved, Cornelius. And for him to be saved from a Jewish standpoint, it took a miracle for Peter to come there and witness to him. I'm going to preach today on Cornelius' conversion. Let's please stand. Acts 10 and verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day of the angel of God coming to him and said unto him, Cornelius, and when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thy alms are come up before God for memorial. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodgeth with one Simon a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou orders to do. You may be seated. In Matthew, Jesus says these words to the disciples, twelve disciples. Go not into the way of the Gentiles, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He gave twelve disciples, his twelve disciples, instructions. Do not go to the Gentiles, but go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. John 1 explains this. He came into his own, and his own received him not. And the Jews were the ones who should have cared the gospel for some 2,000 years. But they did not receive him overall as the Messiah. So now the Gentiles, for some 2,000 years, you and I are Gentile, we're carrying the gospel around the world. The good news that Christ was crucified, buried, and resurrected. But Cornelius' conversion, number one, he had responsibility. He had responsibility. He had a place of authority. But even to have responsibility and the place of authority was not his ticket into heaven. In verse 1, we find the words, Cornelius, a centurion. It's a Latin word that means a hundred. Of a band called the Italian band, Roman soldiers he had from, from Italy. He had authority and responsibility of 100 soldiers. He was a man in authority. He was a man who had responsibility. And sometimes in life we have people who believe, well, I've advanced so far in my vocation. I've achieved so many earthly things in my life. Surely I'm going to heaven. But that's not true. Cornelius was a man who had under him a hundred Roman soldiers from Italy. He was a man who carried authority. He had a man who could get things accomplished. But Cornelius at this time is not saved. Number two, he had religion in his home. 
Look in verse 2 with me. A devout, devout means godly man, one that feared God with all his house. Listen what happens next. Which gave much alms, that means deeds of compassion to the people, and he prayed. And that verse 2 sounds to me like a Christian. It sounds like someone who is saved. But in verse 1 and verse 2, he's not saved. He's a man who gives compassionate deeds to people. He's a man with all his house that has a reverence for God. He's a man who prays to God always. And he is lost. People sometimes say, I pray every night. I have my prayers every day. I give compassionate deeds to a lot of people. My whole house fears God. We have a reverence for God. But all of this, so far, in the first two verses, we have just read about someone, if he died right here, would die and go to hell. He's lost. Number three, reaction from heaven. Everybody has to have this. We have to have, in our lives that we live, we have to have reaction from heaven. Heaven has to get involved with us on the earth. Let's see now the reaction from heaven we have here in verse 3. He saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour or 3 p.m. in the afternoon of the day, an angel of God coming in to him and saying unto him, Cornelius, I believe now for the first time he's heard from heaven. He feared God, all his house. He gave alms to all people, compassionate deeds. He prayed all the time. But now is a day everyone in the earth has to have. Reaction that comes from heaven. The Holy Spirit has to draw us or we cannot come. We have to have reaction from heaven. Heaven has to step into our lives. Even good people, so-called good people, who have a reverence for God, who give alms to the poor, compassionate deeds to people, who pray all the time, still is no good unless heaven steps in to our lives. Notice the efforts here are noticed now in verse 4, the latter part of verse 4. Listen to what the angel says. Thy prayers and thy alms, compassionate deeds, are come up for memorial before God. In other words, God has been noticing your life. Your prayers and your offerings of good deeds to people have come up before God. God has noticed your life. I'm come here to tell you as an angel that God has noticed your lives. He has given a memorial in his, in his own existence to what you're doing, a reminder that what you're doing, God has noticed what you're doing, but he's still not saved. Heaven has stepped in. He has seen an angel in his presence with a word from God, and this man is still lost. If he died right here, he would still go to hell. A life is somewhat living by means higher than some Christians. I mean, he's doing in verse 2 a lot of good things. To fear God, to give offerings to the people, and to pray to God always is, is a good list. But he's not saved. And today we have in the church of God in our own country, we have people that fit verse 1 and verse 2. And they do a lot of good things. Even give some offerings. Have time to pray to God every night. Who have a reverence for God, but not saved. Because heaven has to intermingle with our lives for salvation to come. It's not just walking the aisle of a carpeted church. It's not just telling the clerk your birthday and your anniversary. 
It's not just trying to do things in your life better. We have to have what some call is an old-fashioned encounter with God. Heaven has to intermingle with our lives for salvation to happen. Now, notice to hear the explanation that's needed here in verse 5. Let's read verse 5 and 6. Read it with me, please. The angel says, And now send men to Joppa, and you call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodgeth with one Simon a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. Listen to what he says. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. Go get Simon. He'll tell you what you ought to do. Ethiopians said to Philip, how can I know except some man guide me? You were introduced with a gospel that came through somebody. Somebody came by your house or from a pulpit somewhere. Somebody used by God told you and told me what I needed to do. Somebody came by your life and shared with you what you and I ought to do. So now he is praying, he's giving offerings, he has a fear for God, and his whole house is saying, and now angel says, you need some help. I got somebody who can help you. Send down the Joppa. I tell you where he is. He's by the seaside. And get Simon Peter. He'll come here to your house and tell you what you ought to do. Let me stop right now and inject today for you who are this lost or by other means of outreach. Let me tell you what you ought to do if you're lost. You must repent of your sins. You must turn your mind away from the world and Satan and turn your mind toward God. You must, in your heart, tell God, I'm sorry of my sins, and I repent. Holy Spirit, now help me. Jesus, I want you to be my Lord, Master, Owner, and Savior. And with my mouth, I confess that. Romans 10, 9 says, Thou shalt be saved. I didn't say now, go find your church and join it today. I didn't say get baptized tonight. I didn't say write a check of an offering. I didn't say put on white socks and get you a haircut. I said we must be born again. Amen. Go get Simon Peter, and he'll tell you what you ought to do. Now, let's see what happens. Let's see how the explanation comes. Number one... Oh, you listen to me. Never put any man on a pedestal. Let me say it again. I don't care if it's a preacher, a governor, whoever it is. Never put anybody on a pedestal. You're headed for a great defeat and downfall in your life. And now let's look down to verse 25. Verse 25. As Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up. I myself am a man. Get up. As you and I tell people what they ought to do, remind them I'm just a human being. I'm not perfect. I'm forgiven. I'm not perfect. I'm forgiven. Peter says, stand up. I'm just a man. I'm just a human being. I'm just somebody who's been saved. I've come here to tell you what you ought to do, but don't put me on a pedestal. You follow my life for one week, I disappoint you. You understand that? Maybe you're not the same way I am. If you're not that same way, then you need to sell some books. Because all of us, on any given day, any given hour, before people, we'll fail them, 
Disappoint them. Discourage them. So today, put your eyes on the one who won't disappoint you. Put your eyes on the Lordship of Jesus Christ. He will never disappoint you. He says, I'm a man. Get up. You seek up because God is no respect to a person. Verse 28. Let's go down to verse 28. And he said unto him, them, you know how that is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come into one another nation's house. But God has showed me I should not call any man common, defile, or unclean. Now get the picture. You got three men coming to get Simon Peter from Cornelius' house. And he's on the housetop. It's about time for a meal. He has a meal being prepared. All of a sudden, from heaven comes a vessel like a sheep, and four corners are tied. Inside that sheep, he sees four-footed beasts. He sees wild beasts. He sees fowls of the air. All the things unclean from God's law that he should not eat, he sees it. And God says, kill and eat. He said, I've never eaten anything common. I've never done that. Eat. And don't call anything common that I clean. Don't call anything common that I clean. Eat, have a meal. And by the way, at your door are three more men coming to get you. To cater to a Gentile's house that they call dogs. Come to get you because he wants somebody to come and tell him what he needs to know. I'm going to send you a Jew to a Gentile's house that y'all call a dog. I'm going to send you to him to tell him what he should do. We we'll begin our outreach program in two weeks. We go into all houses, go knock on doors. Does it matter who's behind that door? They'll have the same invitation, the same encouragement, and the same love. No matter how poor, what race, what creed, how they smell, and what they got in the backyard. Everybody needs to hear the gospel at least one time. Everybody. So I want you to eat what you call unclean and go. Now notice here with me. There has to be power, though. Verse 44, you still with me? Thank you, Sandra. While Peter yet spake these words, listen now, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision of the Jews which be believed were astonished. They were astonished. As many as came with Peter, because on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. And the Jews can't believe it. They can't get over it. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came down upon the Jews. Some 17 nations represented in Jerusalem. And the Holy Spirit came down upon them like flames and tongues of fire. fire and they, were, they have now in their bodies the Holy Spirit. But now this Gentile, this little old Gentile, this old, this old dog, now the Holy Ghost has fell upon the words and fell upon his house too. You should be thankful right there that the Holy Ghost came to our house. Before we got who we are today, don't forget how far we've come, sir. Don't forget before you forget how far we've come because the Holy Ghost came to our house. Unless the Holy Spirit would draw us, we couldn't come to Christ. Thank God he stopped by my house. He stopped by your house. So the power has come, but now there's something else I want to emphasize after someone is saved. Verse 47. Can any man forbid water that they should be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we, the Jews, and he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Water baptism. 
not essential to go to heaven, but it's necessary. It's the will of God if physically able and you have enough time before you die. It's being baptized. And I believe, I've been this thing a long time, when somebody comes forward with a profession of faith and you had to run them now to baptize them, you got to run them now to baptize them, I don't feel too much confidence in the prayer they pray to the altar. I'll give you scripture for that. The Ethiopian says to Philip, I want to get baptized. What hindered me to be baptized? And Philip said, you believe that Christ is the Son of God? Yes, I do. And he stopped the horse, he stopped the chair, and baptized him. Someone that's genuine, born again, I believe, has a desire to be baptized in the watery grave that represents Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. Now, you don't have to do that to go to heaven. Church of Christ says that. That's not true. But you have to do that if this is able to be in God's will. There's two steps that everyone has in your salvation beginning. The first step is repentance and get saved. The second step, if possible, is get baptized in water. The first two steps ordered by the Lord is repentance and be baptized. On the day of Pentecost, when Peter preached the sermon, about 3,000 souls were saved. They asked him, what shall we do? He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you. So have you been baptized since you have believed? If not, what is your reason why you're not baptized? You see, gen the Gentile, we are Gentile. If you're not a Jew, you're Gentile. And this one chapter about Cornelius to our lives is very important. That God would send help to any house. He would send help to anybody. Because God so loved the world, he'll go to anybody's house, anybody's life, and have somebody go there and tell them what they ought to do. What's happened over the years, we've given them wrong instructions. Because we think if you can join a church, that's going to be your answer. And that is not even close to your answer. Our first song that we sung in the choir was to have his church we must be born again into his church. So just going to church and getting on the roll, and I hope we can't even find the roll, get on that roll, it's not the answer. We have to be put in the Lamb's book of Almighty God. Our name must be put in the Lamb's book of Almighty God. Wrote in red, cancel our sins, and give us a pardon. And then we have a ticket and assurance we're on our way to heaven. One of these days in eternity, we're going to see Cornelius. We'll meet that man. We'll meet somebody who prayed all the time, who feared God, who gave compassionate deeds to many people who was lost. Are you that way today? Or our outreach ministry, or by ways of the internet, are you that way today? You fear God, you pray, you give offers to people who have need. Are you that way today? And you're going to use that to go to heaven? No. It will not work. If we were asked one question, and we stood at the judgment seat of Christ, it won't be this way, but if it was, and, and the Lord say, give me one reason, and appeal, why you're going to heaven. If I use anything else but Jesus, I'm not going if I use my parents and roll their coattail, if I use church, if I use being a preacher, if I use my tithes, if I use my visit to the hospital, nursing homes, if I use all of that, I'm not going. The answer must be Jesus. That's why I'm going. That's why I'm going. And that's why Cornelius went to heaven. He got saved as a Gentile the same way that God saved the Jews. And now he says to Peter, there's now no difference in a Jew and Gentile. They're all one in Christ Jesus. 
So today I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to tell you what you ought to do. Forget about the small crowd. Forget about your nerves. Just move one foot in a minute. I promise you, the rest of the steps you will not remember. He'll give you power to become his children today. Let's pray across the church. Father, we cannot thank you enough for the word. If the church did not have your word, we'd have no power, we'd have no anointing, we'd have no sword, we'd have no spirit. So thank you for the word of God today we have shared in this house. And now, Father, you know what it is, it's invitation time. And everybody in this house today is going to make a, a decision. Everybody in this house today is going to make a decision. And some are going to say, I hope I get in. I joined the church. I got baptized, preacher. I'm a different person. I hope I get in. But I believe from your word that you teach a no-so salvation. We can say with Apostle Paul, I know in whom I know whom I have believed. But I'm praying that across this church on this rainy Sunday morning, they'll step out and trust you and receive you as Lord and Savior. And I pray for people trying to find a church home to help us work from this local church. They'll come today and say, Pastor, I've been led by the Holy Spirit to make this my home church today. God, do your work in our hearts. All the praise is always yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's please stand. In the book of Acts, the 10th chapter, we saw today the conversion of Cornelius. His lifestyle, when he feared God with all his house, he gave alms to those who had need, he prayed always. That sounds like a good church member, but throughout the first part of that chapter, he was lost. He was headed to hell, fearing God, praying always, and giving alms to those in need but he was lost. You see, the Bible says there's none good, no, not one. We cannot work our way into heaven. Cornelius and every one of us has to go the same way, and that's to be born again. So remember, of all the thousands that were saved in the first part of Acts, some 8,000 people were saved, but God put in his word a large space to talk about the conversion of Cornelius, the first Gentile recorded in the Bible that was saved. Thank God for us Gentiles that we also have the privilege to receive Christ as Lord and Savior. God bless you.